Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is a fine summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this. It is a lovely Sunday morning in the collapse. That would be Sunday, July 31st. 2022 we have made it through another month in the summer of 2022 and we'll wait to see what august brings it is presently 74 degrees at the moment here going on noon on the last day of july and uh the great state of new york baby so uh being sunday i'm supposed to be doing my doomsday sermon but i did that yesterday we heard from a fellow collapsitarian that little lefty tom hartman speaking of lefties so today we're just gonna go over for some straight ahead doomer porn from the good old guardian uh, where we're gonna hear from some climatologists who i think i've mentioned before here on collapse chronicles I wanted to, uh, before I started, I wanted to <laughs> take note of a comment that my fellow collapsitarian, Elliot Jacobson, made this morning about how these essays, like the one from Tom Hartman and this book that we're going to talk about here, are sounding uh, more and more redundant and purposeless. As I told Elliot, Elliot's fairly new down here in the Doomosphere. <laughs> he has a fine blog, Watching the World Go By, B-Y-E. And uh, as I pointed out to him, as you're finding out in your own foray down here in the Doomosphere, <clears throat> yes, the uh, We Are So Doomed essays are a little bit redundant. So are they purposeless? Is this article in the guardian for instance purposeless i guess that depends on your definition of purpose now i do admit one of the main reasons i stopped interviewing people on collapse chronicles is because there are so many just so many ways you can say sorry <clears throat> but anyway for those of you those of you who uh, understand the purpose of these redundant essays, we're going to hear, well, it's not an essay. I guess it's an interview, an article about this uh, climatologist from England named Bill McGuire. Bill McGuire, not to be confused with Bill McKibben. Okay. <laughs> there is no confusion. That even Bill McGuire tries to scrape up a, a little bit of hopium at the end of this article. And uh, so we will find out the new definition of hopium in the collapse. But what is on your mind today, Bill McGuire? I guess he's technically maybe a volcanologist. Uh, quote, soon it will be unrecognizable, close quote, as total climate meltdown cannot be stopped, says expert. That you can delay it a little bit by moving to upstate New York, but of course, a lot of people thought that they were uh, delaying it a little bit by living in England. Where is Where does England lie along the top of the planet with New York. Are we about even with England? I honestly don't know if the Finger Lakes of New York, how close we are in latitude to London, England. Would someone please look that up? All right, take it away. Bill McGuire. <clears throat> Blistering heat waves are just the start. We must accept how bad things are before we can head off global catastrophe, according to a leading UK scientist. Yeah, so uh, heading off 
a global catastrophe is uh, <laughs> is the best hopium we can get to. All right. <clears throat> the publication of Bill McGuire's latest book, Hot House Earth, could not be more timely. Appearing in the shops this week, it will be perused by sweltering customers who have just endured record high temperatures across the UK and now face the prospect of weeks of drought to add to their discomfort. All this is just the beginning, insists McGuire, who is Emeritus Professor of Geophysical and Climate Hazards at University College in London as he makes clear in his uncompromising depiction of the coming climatic catastrophe we have for far too long ignored explicit warnings that rising carbon emissions are dangerously heating the earth. Now we are gonna pay the price for our complacency in the form of storms, floods, droughts, and heat waves that will easily pass our current extremes. <clears throat> the crucial point, he argues, is that there is now no chance of avoiding a perilous, all-pervasive climate breakdown. We have past the point of no return and can expect a future in which lethal heat waves and temperatures in excess of 50 degrees C, otherwise known as 120 degrees Fahrenheit, are common in the tropics where summers at temper, temperate latitudes will invariably be baking hot and where our oceans are destined to become warm and acidic. Quote, a child born in 2020 will face a far more hostile world than his grandparents did. McGuire insists uh, that uh, doesn't say in here whether Bill McGuire is a breeder or not. I'm guessing that he is. Um, okay. <clears throat> in this respect, the volcanologist, who is also a member of the UK government's national, I mean, sorry, natural hazard working group, takes an extreme position. Most other climate experts still maintain we have time left, although not very much time, hmm, to bring about meaningful reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. A rapid drive to net zero and the halting of global warming is still within our grasp, they say. Such claims are dismissed as unadulterated horseshit by McGuire. <clears throat> Obviously, I added two words to that sentence. <clears throat> Quote, I know a lot of people working in climate science who say one thing in public, but a very different thing in private. In confidence, they are all much more scared about the future we face, but they will not admit that in public. I call this climate appeasement, and I believe it only makes things worse. The world needs to know how bad things are going to get before we can huh, before we can huh, before we can uh, oh, to start to tackle the crisis, close quote. Yes. 
McGuire finished writing Hot House Earth at the end of 2021, you know, what is that, seven months ago. He includes many of the, re the record high temperatures that had just afflicted the planet, including extremes that had struck the UK. Just a few months after he completed his manuscript, and as publication loomed, he found that many of those records had already been broken. Quote, that is the trouble with writing a book about climate breakdown. By the time it is published, it is already out of date. That is how fast things are moving. Close quote. Among the records broken, records broken during the book's editing was the announcement that a temperature of 40.3 C was reached in East England on July 19th. You know, that's a little bit over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the highest temperature ever recorded in the UK. The, pre, the country's previous hottest temperature, 38.7 C, was in Cambridge in 2019. In, additions, in addition, London's fire service had to tackle blazes across the capital with one conflagration destroying 16 homes in Wennington in East London. Crews there had to fight to save the local fire station itself. Quoting McGuire, who would have thought that a village on the edge of London would be almost wiped out by wildfires in 2022? If this country needs a wake-up call, then surely that is it. Close quote. <clears throat> wildfires of un unprecedented intensity and ferocity have also swept across Europe, North America, and Australia this year. And of course, they left out South America, Alaska, which of course is part of the U.S., Siberia. There's probably wildfires burning at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> While record rainfall in the Midwest led us to the devastating flooding in Yellowstone National Park, says McGuire, quote, as we head further into 2022, it is already a different world out there. Soon it will be un recognizable to every one of us." Close quote. These changes underline one of the most startling aspects of climate breakdown. The speed with which global temperature rises translate into extreme weather. Quote, just look at what is happening already to a world which is only heated up by just over one degree. It turns out the climate is changing for the worse far quicker than predicted by early climate models. That is something that was never expected. Close quote. I, I don't know about you guys. I've been expecting it and predicting it for 12 years now. Uh, how, how can this man say uh, that was never expected? I expected it, uh, you know, uh, back in 2008 uh, when I went down this rabbit hole, you know, living in Texas and decided uh, to get my climate refugee ass out of Texas uh, in 2020 is when uh, I decided it was time for my final break from Hot House, Texas. And here I am, a climate refugee, 
12 years later where the high today is lower than the low in Austin, Texas. Anyway, back to the Guardian. <clears throat> Since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, when humanity began pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, here we go again, guys, and there's no sense in getting into this pointless debate. Talk about a purposeless, redundant debate. According to the standard BS uh, definition, global temperatures have risen by just over 1C. At the COP26 climate meeting in Glasgow last year, it was agreed that every effort should be made to try to limit that rise to one and a half C, although to achieve such a goal, it was calculated that global carbon emissions will have to be reduced by 45% by 2030. So what does Bill McGuire have to say about that? Quote, in the real world, you know, unlike the world of the United Nations, in the real world, that is not going to happen. Instead, we are on course for close to a 14% rise in emissions by that date, meaning eight years from now, which will almost certainly see us shatter the one and a half C guardrail in less than a decade, close quote. So apparently, McGuire is buying in to the big lie that we have not already hit uh, one and a half C. And of course, a lot of that depends on where you put the goalpost as the beginning of the industrial revolution. If you move the goalpost back to where it belongs in 1750, as Bill McGuire knows in private and is not saying in public that we have already blown through uh, this one and a half degree and that this one and a half degree global average is, doesn't take place uniformly. Uh, over the planet that a lot of areas of the planet, such as the Arctic, uh, blew through one and a half years ago. Uh, anyway, I said I wasn't getting into this pointless, redundant, purposeless debate about this uh, one and a half C crap. Anybody with a brain knows we have already blown through that here in the real world on this beautiful spring day on July 31st, New York, baby. Okay. <clears throat> and we should be, this is back to the Guardian, and we should be in no doubt about the consequences. Anything above one and a half C will see a world plagued by intense summer heat extreme drought, devastating floods, reduced crop yields, rapidly melting ice sheets, and surging sea levels. A rise of 2C and above will seriously threaten the stability of global society. As McGuire, argue, as McGuire argues, <clears throat> It should also be noted that according to the most, huh, according to the most, huh, the, the most huh, hopeful estimates of emission cut pledges made at COP26, the world is on course to heat up by somewhere between 2.4 and 3C, you know, that is the most optimistic of the scenarios. Uh, from this perspective, it is clear we can do little to avoid the coming climate breakdown. Instead, 
we need to adapt to the hothouse world that lies ahead and to start taking action. Yes, to start taking action to try to stop a bleak situation deteriorating even further, McGuire says. So now we're coming up with the new definition of hopium here in the collapse. Certainly, as it stands, Britain, and this is probably about the same for upstate New York, I'm guessing, although relatively well-placed to counter the worst effects of the coming climate breakdown, faces major headaches. Heat waves will become more frequent, get hotter, and last longer. Huge numbers of modern, tiny, poorly insulated UK homes will become heat traps responsible for thousands of deaths every summer by 2050. Says McGuire, quote, despite repeated warnings, hundreds of thousands of these inappropriate homes continue to be built every year, close quote. As to the reason for the world's tragically tardy response, McGuire blames what he calls, quote, a conspiracy of ignorance, inertia, poor governance, and obfuscation and lies by climate change deniers that has ensured that we have sleepwalked to within less than one half a degree of the dangerous one and a half C climate change guardrail. Soon, barring some sort of miracle, we will crash through it. Close quote. The future is forbidding from this perspective, though McGuire stresses that if carbon emissions can be cut substantially in the near future, yes, says the man who uh, says in the real world that is never going to happen. So that's all right. So first he says, it is never going to happen that we are going to cut carbon emissions in the real world. And then he gets to the hopium at the end of the story saying, if carbon emissions can be cut substantially in the near future, when he knows damn well that they cannot and if they were able to be, they will not be. So what is this crap he's coming up with uh, here at the end of this article? The guy knows damn well. He just told us it ain't going to happen in the real world. So now he's back into, into the same head up his ass uh, fantasy world that the UN is living in. Y you know, dude, make up your damn mind. You know damn well. Anyway... McGuire stresses that if carbon emissions can be cut substantially in the near future, and if we start to adapt to a much hotter world today, a truly calamitous and unsustainable future can be avoided. There you go. The days ahead will be grimmer, but not disastrous if we, you know, if by some sort of miracle, uh, you know, this little uh, fairy tale actually unfolds, the days ahead will be grimmer, but not disastrous. He's sounding a little bit like my buddy uh, Jeremy Jimenez, who I interviewed here. What, what, Jeremy, what do you say the, the choices between harder and horrible. Uh, it sounds like Bill McGuire and uh, Jeremy Jimenez 
uh, if we can just stay on the grimmer side you know it's like what is Woody Allen you know the, the world is basically basically divided up into the basically miserable and the truly horrible and if you can just stay on the basically miserable side of truly horrible as Woody Allen would say uh, then you can consider yourself a winner alright that is the goal we're aiming for grim but not disastrous. Hmm. We may not be able to give climate breakdown the slip, but we can head off further installments that would appear as a climate cataclysm bad enough to threaten the very survival of human civilization. You know, not to mention a, not to mention a planet, but of course, the only way we are going to reduce emissions is to have human civilization collapse and die. All right. Wrapping up this interview with Bill McGuire, quote, This is a call to arms. So, if you feel the need to glue yourself to a motorway or blockade an oil refinery, do it. Drive an electric car. Yes! Not ride a bicycle or walk, but drive an electric car. Or even better, use public transport. Walk or cycle. Yes. Switch to a green energy tariff. I'm not sure of the definition of a green energy tariff. Sounds like hopium to me. Whatever the hell a green energy tariff is. Eat less meat. Stop flying. <coughs> Lobby your electric... Electric, yes. Lobby your elected representatives at both local and national levels and use your vote wisely to put in power a government that walks the talk on the climate emergency. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. We ain't buying it. Uh, nowhere in his list of things to do did I see uh, keep your pecker in your pants and don't let your knickers down. Obviously, obviously, you are not going to see don't breed anywhere on the list of Bill McGuire's suggestions for uh, staying on the grim side of disaster. Nowhere mentioned. I'm guessing that Bill uh, does have some little uh, plan in it. Probably looks like this guy is about my age. Uh, my guess is he has, probably being Sunday, he probably has some uh, adorable little uh, grandchildren on his knee. Who is that? Chuck and Vera? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, guys, I have got to wrap this up. Uh, this doomer pouring up and uh, take advantage of the drought here so I can go shovel the silt from last year's five floods at Bugs in a Jar Farm shovel and now that it's a drought I can shovel out this beautiful silt that got dumped into my pond actually my bog garden and all of the flooding last year so uh, this is uh, making lemonade out of a drought so I can get ready for the flood next year I highly suggest 
you get out there and shovel silt out of your bog garden while you still can. Bye, guys.